Hi everybody, I'm Tabitha and I've read five more books. So I, on this channel, do book reviews every time I read five more books and these are the first five that I finished in the month of December. So I'm going to give you all five book reviews and remember if you're just looking for one specific one, there are helpful timestamps that will let you jump to the book you're looking for. In fact, there's also timestamps that will help you jump right to my rating scale unless you're, in case you're trying to figure out how I give a book five stars. I do a lot of rating based specifically on genre. So check that out if this is the first time watching a video with me. Anyway, let's go. The first book I read in the month of December was Everless by Sarah Holland. This is a young adult age category fantasy story. It was published in 2018 by Harper Teen and it is 362 pages. Your synopsis. In the kingdom of Sempra, time is a currency. It's extracted from your blood and taken from your own lifespan. The rich live for centuries at the cost of the poor, hoarding the wealth. Jules Ember and her father fled the palace and now she may be forced back into their borders and she may be facing secrets she never fathomed. This is going to be a fast review for me. It's not a book anybody's waiting for. It didn't earn a shield, anything fancy like that. And I'm going to be honest with you, it wasn't my favorite book. So check out the full review over on Goodreads. But for now, I'm just going to say, who do I think should read this one? If you are a fan of the reluctant hero trope, specifically when that plays out in epic fantasy stories, you might like this one more than I did, which is weird to say because I normally like that trope. Also, if you are overly intrigued by the idea of this time as a currency angle and you're willing to wade through other problematic elements of a story, even if as long as that part is done moderately well, you might like this more than I did. My rating, I gave this one three stars. This book isn't for everyone. Not all fantasy fans are going to love it. But if you like the idea, you may love the detail that goes into this one. So three stars for Everless by Sarah Holland. The next book I read in the month of December was Flame in the Mist by Renee Ada. This was a 2017 publication by G.P. Putnam's Sons. It's a young adult age category fantasy story, although it's a historical like fantasy story, and it is 392 pages. Your synopsis. Mariko has always known her purpose to marry. It doesn't matter that she's cunning. It doesn't matter she's a decent alchemist. All that matters is she's a woman. So when Mariko narrowly escapes an attack on her life, she'll make a choice that will change everything for her. So this is also going to be a fast review because honestly, I really didn't love this one. Nobody's waiting for the review. It wasn't a shield, nothing like that. So I'm just going to jump to the who do I think should read this one again. Um, this one, you know what? I'd be interested in hearing what other book reviewers, maybe who's somebody who's more familiar with Feudal Japan, really thinks of this one. Um, I'm not an expert, so I'm not sure how that setting held up. So I think if you're an expert on that, I would love for you to read it and, you know, check back with me. Besides that, I think if you liked Mulan, the movie, I could see you maybe enjoying this one. It was like Mulan inspired, sort of. Anyway, whatever. Um, my rating, I gave this one two stars. So for me, the fact that this one was overly dramatic kind of pulled me out of the story and made the reading really cumbersome. In fact, I had to try this one as an audiobook and then had to drop the audiobook and try it as a book book. And even then it was tough to get through. So I just think um, it was overly detailed and overly dramatic and that made it a little hard to get through. So for me, problematic, two stars for Flame in the Mist by Renee Ada. <laughs> book I read in the month of December was A Stranger in the House by Sherry LaPena. This is an adult age category mystery thriller. It was published in 2017 by Pamela Dorman Books and it is 305 pages. Your synopsis. Karen and Tom Krupp are happy but one day Tom returns home to find Karen has been in an accident. The accident left Karen with a concussion and memory loss but ultimately she's fine until a dead man turns up in the area near where she was. Everyone in this house is keeping secrets. So this is also going to be a fast review. Apparently this is just the month for I read something nobody was waiting on and it wasn't a shield and it wasn't my favorite. So again, check out the full review on Goodreads. I'm just going to jump to who do I think should read this one. If you like those lifetime movies that are like high tension dramas that are a little mystery thriller ones, you might like this more than I did. 
And that's what I'm going to say about this one. My rating, I gave this one two stars. No characters I could latch on to, plus missing stakes made this one incredibly problematic. And I was disappointed because I love this author. So two stars for A Stranger in the House by Sherry LaPena. The next book I read for the month of December was A Song for the Road by Catherine Labadi. This is an adult age category fantasy novel. It was published in 2020 by Labadi Publishing and it is 504 pages. Your synopsis. An outcast of her community, Larkspur endures her poor health alone. At a yearly moon festival, she asks, asks the spirits for better luck. Instead, they lead her to a foundling elf child and a journey she never expected. So what didn't I like about this one? Well, the first thing I can say I didn't like about this one is that it is a little wordy and cumbersome. I will say it fits the lyrical feel of the book. More on that in a second. But it means that this is definitely not a fast read. You're going to need to allow yourself time to slowly read and enjoy this one. Just know that going into it and it won't be a problem for you. Second thing I can say I didn't particularly love about this one, it just does have some unnecessary scenes and details. This happens often when we're looking at a book that's over 500 pages. This one had scenes that probably could have been skipped or shortened. And it wasn't a huge issue for me, but if that's a problem for you, be aware. Third thing I can say I wasn't crazy about for this one is it does have some dry characters. Outside of Larkspur herself, I really didn't love anyone in this story. I feel like the rest of the cast almost blends together to the point where it's like Larkspur and then everyone else. So what did I like about this one? I just hinted at it, but the first one is Larkspur herself. I like her attitude. I like her strength. I like her focus on like lyricism and poetry and words. I like her willingness to complete this journey. I like her dedication to the kid. I just like her. She was really cool. Great character to base a story around and somebody I would definitely follow. Second thing I like about this one, and again, I hinted at it, is that this one has a seriously lyrical feel. It's fantasy, but not in the way you'd come to expect from fantasy, maybe. Yes, there are elves and there's dwarfs, but this one like takes its time and just revels in the beauty of this world that the author has built and the language in like this really cool way. So it's a quiet, beautiful fantasy. And since I'm a poetry fan, I found myself enjoying that. Who do I think should read this one? If you're a reader who thinks that fantasy should take its time and be more character focused, you are going to love this one. It is your dream book come true. Also, I think if you're a reader who just enjoys beautiful language or poetry in your story, you're going to love this one. My rating? I gave this one three stars. I think that not every fantasy fan is going to love it, but if you're a fan of quiet fantasy with big language, you will adore this book. And I do fall in that niche, so I did as well. So three stars for A Song for the Road by Catherine Labonte. The fifth book I read for the month of December, and the final one for your video today, is Come Join the Murder by Holly Ray Garcia. This is an adult age category mystery thriller. It was published in 2020 by Close to the Bone, which is an independent publishing company, and it is 239 pages. Your synopsis. Rebecca Crow's four-year-old son is dead, and her husband is missing. James Porter knows exactly what happened to them, but he's keeping it a secret. The police have no suspects and nothing to go on except mention of a man driving a van. Guilt and grief cloud Rebecca's thoughts and she stumbles toward her only mission, revenge. So what didn't I like about this one? Well, the first thing I can say I didn't like about this one is that there are characters you may not love. If you're bothered by unreliable narrators, obviously dark villains, or questionable decisions from your main character, you may not love this one. Just consider it a content warning. Second thing I can say I wasn't crazy about is the, speaking of content warnings, is the graphic deaths and murders, including those of animals and children, do make an appearance in this one. So be warned, there's your content warning. Third thing I can say I wasn't crazy about, uh, there were a few typos. And when I say few, I think I maybe saw two. It's not a big deal for me, but if you're pickier on your grammar and your typos than I am, just be aware there were a few. So what did I like about this one? Okay, this first one is huge. This book walks the line between thriller and horror in a freaking masterful way, my friends. I adore books that like know where that line is and tiptoe right on it. 
between genres and this book does exactly that. I wasn't expecting to be surprised by the book. I mean, literally the first chapter, you know who the bad guy is right from chapter one, but learning it along with Rebecca and trying to like be shocked by what she does with that knowledge. It's intense. It was a journey that, whoa, I loved it. Second thing I can say I liked about this one, it is hugely original. And you know, for me, that is high praise. I love books that take risks and I love when the risks work. The masterful way this author deals with new suspects was totally original and wonderful. This book just takes that risk and it works. It's a great way to twist a story that we think we've heard before into something completely new. Third thing I can say I loved about this one is that ending. Okay, so actually I'm torn on that final chapter because you know me, I don't always think we need all the answers in a story. And I feel like that final chapter was like a bow the author was putting on it. But that second to last chapter was like perfection. I mean, whoa. I suspected like that's how the story was going a little bit, but you know, there was some foreshadowing coming from the book. And so that's cool. It's nice to see that tool used well and that foreshadowing play out, but it doesn't ruin the story. It didn't make me feel like I knew it all. It didn't spoil anything for me. It was just a moment I anticipated in like the darkest recesses of my mind. And then the author went there. So that was just amazing. Really cool. Who do I think should read this one? If you're a reader who likes the idea of a mystery thriller crossing with horror, you are going to love this book. Go get it. I also think if you like new and original things in your books, like I do, you're going to love the way this one handles new suspects for a crime. And I also think, I mean, really, if you in general just like dark books, you should go get this one because it is dark in an amazing, wonderful way. My rating, I gave this one five stars. Friends, this book crosses the line between horror and mystery thriller. And around here, genre crossing gets you five stars. This is a gorgeously dark little tango between genres. Five stars for Come Join the Mur Murder by Holly Ray Garcia. All right, watchers, you just heard me give this book five stars. That means if you have a book that you think is similar to this book, please make sure you drop the name of the book and the author down below in the comments because I'll be choosing books based on this one for next month's TBR. Okay, friends, that is it for me and the first five books that I read in December while I sit here in my cozy little corner and tell you about it. Thanks for being here. I hope that you uh, found a book you want to add to your TBR. There was a couple. And then don't forget to check out those full reads on Goodreads if you're interested. Drop a comment to let me know you're still here. Hit subscribe and tap that little bell so you know when I'm back. Keep plotting the path to your own dreams, and I will see you next time. Bye! <laughs>